Post of the University of the West Indies, and I will be guiding you through this morning's program. Let me acknowledge the presence of our Deputy Principal, uh, Dr. Tomlin Paul, the Dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences, Dr. Heather Ricketts, from whom you'll hear later. Let me acknowledge the presence of Mrs. Uh, Folks Goldson, who is the um, acting dean of the Faculty of Law, or president of the Guild of, of Students, who is with us uh, this morning, Miss Omolora Wilson, and we have from the Health Center, Dr. Nemiche Richards, who is our psychiatrist in that space, and a friend of the Office of Student Services and Development. Uh, parents, family members, friends, spouses, well-wishers, students even. Good morning to you. You sound a little bit weak like you never have some, some real country breakfast. I think you all are from the city or, you know, um, I know some of you are from the rest of the region. But when you're a Jamaican like me and you eat some cornmeal dumpling and afu yam, and dasheen and you know some of the other things in the morning then you know the good morning is healthy and 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 and, and mrs folks goes if you're from the country like me you know, everybody you pass this morning you know so we have good country manners so let's let, let's try that again good morning ladies and gentlemen all sounding better i feel good in myself now that's a little sweet bonono this morning you know and so i am delighted to to welcome you here to the Mona campus of the University of the West Indies. I want to say to our parents, spouses, and family members, thank you for choosing the Mona campus. Thank you for choosing the UWI. We know you had options, but the fact that you, you chose us, we are truly delighted about that. The fact of the matter, though, is that you have chosen well. Because the University of the West Indies continues to be the premier tertiary level institution this side of the hemisphere. And we guarantee you that having committed your child, your ward to us, we will take care of him or her. We will ensure that your child or ward has an amazing experience here on campus. It is already known that we are excellent at the academics. But what distinguishes us, what sets us apart from other learning institutions at this level, is the beyond the, beyond the classroom learning experiences that your child, your ward will have here on campus. Our commitment is to give you value added. And so our faculty numbers among the best. But what you will find that your child or ward will develop outside of the classroom in areas of debating and public speaking. And so when your child returns and you find them with these excellent oratory skills and they are good in debating and public speaking and they are displaying leadership um, skills and they, 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 have, they, they, they know and demonstrate their responsibility to the society. When your child leaves home and perhaps had two left foot, but now your child is a football extraordinaire, a footballer extraordinaire. You're wondering, where this, did all of this come from? But you'll find out that your child will become involved in other activities beyond the classroom experience that will help them to know how to relate to persons from various um, backgrounds. You know, and that, that will teach them team skills that will teach them hard work, that will teach them how to win and how to, to lose even. 
will teach them how to appreciate differences that will develop in them some social skills that will make them good global citizens. That is what the UWI is all about. It's a true melting pot of persons from across the region and around the world even. And the learning that will happen in politics and um, in current affairs, you name it. These things are happening under the tree, on the lining bench, in our halls of residence. That's what we are all about. And so our, our commitment is to generate and to foster exceptional teaching and learning experiences for our students. We have come here today under the theme, Supportive Families Curating the Resilient Student. It is because we acknowledge and recognize that parents are important partners in the process of learning and development. We recognize that you would have spent time with your child through CXCs, through, um, through CAPE. You'd have spent time with them studying. You'd have provided a shoulder on which to cry. You'd have provided um, financial resources, just a listening ear even. And we want for you to continue to be that supportive parent. But parenting a high school student is different from parenting a university student. And so today, we will provide you with some critical and relevant and timely information that will help you to be a better support to your child or ward as he or she navigates the university campus. We want for your child to be resilient because there are going to be obstacles. Your child will have to adapt and adjust to misfortunes and to overcome obstacles and to bounce back from these things. And we recognize that if a student learns how to handle hurdles, this will have a lasting impact on their future careers and on their relationships. And so we want for our students to be resilient, to be able to navigate the challenges of the space and to be able to succeed. And so we here at the UWI, we will have a suite of programs and activities to help your child to be resilient. And all we ask of you is to continue to lend support to your child or ward. Just by being there, being a good listener, provide the resources that they need, right? And to help them to navigate this space. And so with these words, these words, I welcome you to the UWI Mona. We look forward to working with you. We look forward to together with you, partnering to shape the next few years of your child or your ward. We appreciate your choice of being here. We thank you for being here today as parents and family members. And we look forward to a fruitful first year where we will create a foundation of excellence. And together we'll work over the next three to five years to ensure that your child meets and exceeds the standards that they have set for themselves. Welcome to the UWI Mona, and we look forward for a fruitful and wonderful experience. This morning, we have with us our Deputy Principal, Dr. Tomlin Paul. He's no stranger to parent and family orientation. He has spoken on academic matters um, uh, before. Um, you know, while he served as Dean of the Faculty of Medical Sciences, he's here this morning in a new capacity as Deputy Principal, someone who is the ideal person for both academic matters and student matters. I invite you to put your hands together and to make welcome to the lecture and our Deputy Principal, um, Dr. Tomlin Paul. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. McKenzie, our Director of the Office of Student Services and Development. My UWE colleagues, Dean Ricketts, my colleagues, uh, Dr. Richards, uh, Ms. Wilson, our President of the Guild. Um, we have uh, members of other members of our faculty, but more than 
What is important this morning, let me greet and welcome our parents and students of the new, new students and parents of the UWE Mona campus. Let's give you, I wanna give you a, a warm round of applause and welcome. It is, it really is my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of Principal Denzel Williams, who is, uh, sends his apologies that he couldn't be here in person to, to bring greetings. But I am particularly delighted, as Mr. McKenzie said, you have chosen UWE. You have chosen UWE Mona. At UWE Mona, we have some seven faculties, yeah, and we have over 200 programs, many departments, institutes, centers, and you found a program that you liked enough to say, I'm going to sign up for this. So that is really, I'm very excited to hear that you, first of all, said, this is where I want to be. This is where I want to do my further education, having succeeded and done well in high school, or some of you may have already completed a, I know, university degree and are coming back or coming to do a second degree. I know all of that is happening. So we're very, very happy that, as uh, Mr. McKenzie said, that you've made the choice. And I understand that today is moving in day, uh, Mr. McKenzie? Yes. Moving in day. And I recall when I moved in to the Mona campus. So I, too, like you, had chosen the Mona campus not too long ago. I don't know why Dean Ricketts laugh at that. But I recall the day that I moved in. I recall that day. I landed in Jamaica. I came from Trinidad and Tobago. And what I remember, one of the things I remember most about that day is how big and how heavy my suitcase was. Because that suitcase was packed by my mother. And in that suitcase, I still re I remember the color of the suitcase. It was a brown with some plaid on the side, plaid beige. And in that suitcase, there were many, many, many things. Among them were two pots and a hot plate. You know what a hot plate is? I don't know if students now know what a hot plate is, but there's a little square box with an electrical filament. When I plug it in, I could cook. And my mother made sure that I had a pot, pan, a spoon, cup, and a hot plate. I remember that well. In addition, there were clothes, pajamas, you know, towels. So I packed, she packed a full house, I would say, for me. And I recall that so well, and I'm still so happy to share that with you this morning, because in my recollection, it represented that love and care and connection that my family had, my mother, my father had for me. And leaving was a big deal. Leaving home was a big deal. So some of you have your parents here this morning. Some of you I know are coming um, without your parents. But what it represents, and as you, at UWE we are family, it represents the value and the joy of having family support and family connection as you start off this journey. So you're joining UWE, and you're joining the UWE family also. As your family comes, to you, comes with you this morning, and some will go back home, might be far away, but you're joining the UWE family. And the UWE family is, I would say, depends on how you look at it. It's, it can be, we can say it's an old family. We can say it's a young family. So we are 75 years old this year. And I know some universities are way older and some are way younger. But we feel that we have come of age. You know that thing? You come of age. Some of you, I don't know, maybe 17, 18 years old. When I came with that big suitcase from Trinidad, I, it was a kind of coming of age. Because like, wow, I'm going to, I left home. I have a suitcase. I have my stuff. Mr. McKenzie and team wasn't here, but Mr. McKenzie's representative back then gave me a room. Huh? I got a room on hall. And I had, you know, I was like getting my own show together. Right? Leave home, have my own stuff and so on. And so you're joining this, I would say, 
family in the university that has come of age. Because we have, as a university, we have proven ourselves in terms of the academic work, as, as Mr. McKenzie says, in terms of the development work, in terms of the impact that we're making on society. And as you join this family, I want to say to you that you have a responsibility, we welcome you, to come and be members of this family, this wonderful UWE family. I want to encourage you to put your best foot forward and to work towards success. The one word I would, I would throw at you is that you want to be a successful student, success. And in a few minutes, I want to say to you, there are three things I want to leave with you to encourage you to be that successful student, to, be, to, to show success. The three things I would say, one is get your best grades. Do your best. Do your best. You know, it's, it's an old saying. People say, do your best. When I was leaving home, my mom said, well, you know, Tomlin, do your best. Do your best. That's great. And the second thing is to stay the course. Stay the course. And the third thing, take care of yourself. So very simple. It doesn't sound like great academic advice. That will come. But as you do your best, it means really being organized, thinking, planning, getting the best grades. The one thing in there that I want you to try not to do, and I don't know how many of you are guilty of this. Check yourself now. Compete with others. Compete for the, who gets the better grade? Who is number one? Who is number two? I don't know if you have done that in primary school, high school. But at UWE, there is enough room for everyone to get good performance, good grades, the best grades you can get. So we are not too concerned about you being better than John, Mary, Jane. In fact, what we'd love to do, what we'd love to encourage you to do, is to help the person next to you. Help you the friend that you're making this morning. Help that person who is in the same course with you to do as well as you. That's the culture we want to build and to grow. So do your best. Help each other. Put your best foot forward. There's lots of work to be done. Stay the course. No pun intended. Stay the course. The journey is a marathon. Not the 100 meter. We do well as a Caribbean people. We have, we, you know, we are sprinters, right? Usain Bolt, huh? and you know, all, all of our, the, the athletes, the names, I can't keep up with the names, Seville and Shelly and you know, they, every year there's a new name coming out. Although I always tell people that one of the names in 100 meters that many people don't know is Hazley Crawford. Does anybody know Hazley Crawford? Raise your hand, let me see, Hazley Crawford. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so when I was in high school, uh, Hazley Crawford got a 100-meter goal for Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah? One of her first gold medals in the Olympics. So we have great athletes all through the Caribbean doing sprints, running fast and getting medals and so. Your journey with UWE, I want to put it as a marathon. There are times maybe you will sprint occasionally, but if you're going to sprint from day one and sprint because I want to be like, I'm going to be the number one and... Nice ambition, but you have to manage yourself. So we want you to stay the course. We want you to come back next semester and next year and next year until your degree is completed and you have attained that. So that means really being sensitive to understanding the challenges, managing the challenges. It means what Mr. McKenzie spoke about, and I love his theme for today, the resilient student. It means being persistent and resilient. To do that, you want to have some grit, some grit. Grit is one of the, the big things, really, if you want to succeed. Grit is a combination of, of, of passion and perseverance. Hopefully you're saying this morning, I am so excited. I want to do this. That's the passion. This is my choice. I, you know, great to be here. The perseverance has to follow and add to the passion to build that success. That's grit. So I want to encourage you, add your, keep your passion alive, keep your passion burning, and persist, persevere. Yes, challenges will come. That's the nature of, the, of growth and development. Challenges will come. And the last thing is to take care of yourself. So give your best, get your best grades, give your best, right? Stay the course and take care of yourself. 
taking care of yourself sounds so simple, but in some way it is, it is so important and it can become very personal and complex because it means a lot. I don't know you, I don't know you, I don't know you personally, but you know yourself. And that taking care of yourself may mean a lot of personal things that you need to tackle, planning your agenda. But within that, I want to tell you, taking care of yourself on this campus means getting engaged, getting involved. There's sports, there's activities. So this is more than just getting the grades. It's also, uh, you know, growing and developing. When I was on campus, back then, as I tell you, after I unpacked my suitcase, and I started using my hot plate. I was thankful for the hot plate because there was food on campus, but I could do little things in my room. One of the things I remember, I saw there were horses on campus back then. We had some horses down by the post office. You, you, you get to know the campus, you know the post office gate. And I realized on a Saturday, on a weekend, I could go and learn to ride those horses. I'd never like horses. Wow, that's, I see horses on TV. So I learned to ride horses on, on the campus, learn to ride a horse. That was among many other things, you know, playing sports and so So I want to encourage you to take advantage of this wonderful place, not only the physical place, but the build friends, build your relationships and grow as you spend the time with us. It's a great place to be and we want you to be successful. Principal Williams, myself, all of our deans, our leaders, our uh, members of the administration, we are supporting and investing in your success as much as you have already made that investment, not just financial investment, the personal sacrifice parents that you have made, the encouragement parents and family that you're giving to your children. We are there with you on this journey. That's our business. Our business is your success. So welcome, welcome, welcome to the Mona campus. Thank you. Thank you very much, DP Tomlin Paul. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the students are at the center of everything that we, we do. And the head of our student government here on campus is the president of the Guild of Students. This morning, we have our history making two term president with us in the form of Miss. Omolora Wilson, she will bring you greetings. Please make her welcome. All right, good morning, everyone. Let me just do a slight adjustment. Uh, members of senior administration, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed parents and beloved family members, and of course, students, new students of the University of West Indies, good morning. On behalf of the UE Mona Gill Council, the esteemed student governing body, not only here at the University of West Indies, but the Caribbean, it is with great joy and warmth that I extend a heartfelt welcome to each and every one of you today. Today marks a momentous occasion as we come together to celebrate the beginning of a new chapter in the lives of our beloved students, new students at that, at the University of West Indies, Mona Campus. Dare I say, great people attend universities, but only the greatest come to UE Mona. My name is Omolora Wilson, UE Mona Guild President for the academic year, and I've been granted 10 minutes. I'll, give, I'll probably make it a little shorter to just welcome you to the University of the West Indies and give you some advice from a student's perspective. Administration will always come here and give you your formal information, but I'm always for the students, so I will be talking on behalf of the students, yes? And to all the students who are here, and you look around and you see, I see quite a few students sitting here today. I don't know why, but I'll see you tomorrow too, I hope. But parents, to the students who are sitting here, your presence is a testament of the love and of the unwavering support that you have and the vigor for them to get higher education. And as you embark on this phenomenal and exciting journey of higher education, because as they embark, you embark as well, your role in their lives, parents, remain pivotal. You have been their pillars of strength, You've been their guiding lights, and you've been their source of encouragement that has brought them to this point. And your belief in their potential has been instrumental in shaping the confident individual we see before us today. 
And as parents of tertiary students attending a tertiary institution, your role extends beyond just simply providing financial and emotional support. Your role is one of empowering. Your role is one of understanding. Your role is one of unwavering support. And in this new phase of their lives, parents, our students will undoubtedly encounter challenges upon challenges and uncertainty. And as they navigate this world of academia, your reassuring presence and encouragement will be their anchor. Your role, dear parents, is to be a compassionate listener, it's to be a source of motivation, it's to be a guiding hand in time of needs. I want you to embrace their dreams, I want you to understand their aspirations, and I want you to celebrate their victories no matter how big or how small they are. Remind them, parents, that they are not alone in this journey, for you too are an integral part in this academic success. But this is what I want to also preach to you, parents, that this is the biggest support I need from you. Your child is an asset. It's an asset right now, and you can't give up on your child. When they enter this institution, they're known as a 620. I'll always say that, that you're a 620. And 620 is the first three digits on your ID that's given to every student here. Of the 16,000 students attending the University of the West Indies, all of us are 620s. Your role, parents, is to ensure that your student attends this institution as a 620, but doesn't leave this institution as a 620. Your role, parents, is to ensure that your child harness all the abilities to leave this institution with their name being recognized and not their ID number. Many of our students are first generations, and I know the sacrifice is paying off for you. But ensure that school is always a priority. Drive them to take up study sessions, and as Dr. Paul says, your child's competition is your child and no one else. Teach your child that knowledge should be shared. That's how we teach, and that's how we learn. And as we always say as students, on a one degree, I give a UE. So if your child is a smart one and can help a slow one, let them help a slow one. If your child is a slow one and know a smart one, let them get some advice from the smart one. We're helping each one. Although we have a, a um, saying we have here at the University of the West Indies, each one, help one. Remember again that emotional and financial support is crucial, though not the only things that are essential. Call them every now and then, parents. Send words of encouragement and a little allowance here and there because the money goes fast here. Teach them the soft skill, parents, such as budgeting, food preparation, vigilance, impulse control, etc. Encourage them to assimilate in the culture of the university. You're here for your degree, yes, but networking is essential. Join a club or society Society, attend the guilds integration Thursday and definitely allow them to know their guild counselors. Your child will know me. They'll probably see me the most for the rest of the week. But it's imperative that your child know who is responsible for their halls, who is responsible for their faculties, or who are the student representatives across the board. So encourage your child to socialize in the space. Most importantly, parents, teach your child the power of his or her voice. To be a personal advocate for yourself is essential. Tell your child to demand the respect they're obligated to as students and stakeholders and to know that they deserve to take up space. Here at the University of the West Indies, we recognize that the support of parents and family is an invaluable asset in knowledge and growth. And as the UE Mona Gill Council, we extend our open arms to you as well, parents. Our doors are always open, and we encourage you to reach out to us whenever you require assistance or information, certain information. Anything else, your child has to talk to us. It's us and the child. It's never us and the parents, right? We are here to be your partners in ensuring that your children's well-being and success during their time at the University of the West Indies is essential and fulfilling. As our motto says, together we can make it happen. Their parents and family, as you entrust us with the care and education of your loved ones, we promise to provide them with an enriching and nurturing environment. Our goal is to foster a community that promotes academic excellence, personal growth, and an appreciation for diversity, right? We believe in the power of unity. We believe in the power of inclusivity. And together, we can create a vibrant and supportive space for students to thrive. As we embark on this new academic year, let us stand united in our commitment to our student success. Your presence here today signifies the unbreakable bond that connects us all in this shared journey. Let us celebrate our students' accomplishments, encourage your pursuits, and cherish 
cherish the moments and the memories they will create here during their time at the University of the West Indies. Once again, from the UE Mona Gill Council 2023-2024, a warm welcome to you parents and family of our new students. We're delighted to have you with, here, with us here today. And throughout this exciting journey, together, let us make this academic year one of growth, learning, and unforgettable experience. Thank you. And let us move forward on this journey filled with optimism and hope for the bright future that awaits our students at the University of the West Indies Mona Campus. Rooted, ready, rising. Onwards and upwards, together we rise. Thank you. Another round of applause for our guild president, man. You know, I, I could see. Dina Rick is smiling while she spoke because though she was birthed in rural Jamaica, she was shaped by the Faculty of Social Sciences. <laughs> Madam President, I hear you're talking about this 620 thing, right? For, for people like Dr. Richards and myself, when we came here, our ID number started with the year that you came to UWI, right? right, right, parent? And so I can't call mine because that's 19 something, how long? <laughs> you understand? So it's, it's no 6200 or 6201. No, sir. We talk about 90 that or 80 something, eh? <laughs> I have to be silent on that. Let me not call out my deans and DP and other people. But thank you very much, Madam President, for sharing um, with us in, just, in such very clear tones. Um, here on campus, our quest is to shape the distinctive UWI graduate. We talk about a holistic experience for our students. And so there are many ways that our students get involved beyond the classroom experience. And we have, for example, the Philip Sherlock Center for the Creative Arts, where they do um, drama, dancing, you know, the, the performing arts, if, if, if you may. This morning, we have some talent on display that will come to us from the University, University Classical and Jazz Ensemble. This group is led by Peter Ashburn, CD. Um, he's a Jamaican musician and composer. He's a person who has you know, responsibility for arranging the group and um, the, the, the music of the group and for doing their rehearsals. So ladies and gentlemen, Put your hands together and make welcome um, the UE Classical and Jazz Ensemble.
was so good. I, I, I'm, I'm literally sitting there waiting for more. You know what I mean? But we, we, we understand that the program has to go on and perhaps at some point in time you'll, you'll benefit from an encore um, performance, right? In continuation of our program, ladies and gentlemen, we are delighted to have with us um, consultant psychiatrist and senior member of the health center team with us, um, Dr. Nemiche Richards, who just wants to talk with us about matters of transition. It's, it's, it's so important that our students transition well and benefit from the higher education space. And so, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen help me wel make welcome to the lectern. I'm Dr. Nemiche Richards. Thank you for that very warm welcome and welcome to you all. It is certainly my pleasure to be here this morning with all of you. A very special welcome to all our students and parents. And I just want to big up uh, my deputy principal, uh, Dr. Paul, as well as Dr. Ricketts and all other dignitaries and people involved in making this event happen today. Big up yourselves and big up parents, families, and students who are here. Welcome. Let me just queue up my presentation. Rasheen, I might need a little help. Well, let me start by just introducing myself. As uh, Mr. McKenzie said, I am Dr. Nyamicha Richards, and I am the so consultant psychiatrist at the University Health Center, which is over so, as we say in, right. in Jamaica. But really and truly, it's that road called Gibraltar Campway that faces the Irving Hall, and we're one lot below the Founders Park, which as you get around the campus, you will get to know the different spaces on the campus and find us very easily. Thank you so much. Thank you. Right, so here we go. So in addition to being a consultant psychiatrist, I consider myself a mental health advocate and coach. And the pronouns I use, because we are a campus that considers inclusion, diversity. Um, we do include these pronouns, she, her, hers. But I, as a Jamaican and as a person who respects the Rastafari tradition, I will say I and I. And that really speaks to the love in me and the respect in me that honors the respect in you and the I in you. I also consider myself a daughter a mother and a carer. And I think the caring part is what kind of placed me in the area that I'm in at the health center and the post I fill at the health center. And I come with the elements earth, wind, fire, and water. So you know, don't mess with me. All right, now I'm also bringing greetings from our staff at the health center. From our clinical director, Dr. Tina Hilton Kong, to those staff members who help us to keep the, the environment clean, healthy, a space where you can feel comfortable. So that's Miss Nislia and Miss Kian who help us so much on a daily basis. So I bring greetings from all of us at the Health Center. Now, as we talk about Yui, Yui Mona, of course there's the Yui Five Islands, there's the Yui Open Campus, there's U.A. St. Augustine, U.A. Cave Hill, and let's not forget our Western Jamaica campus. So we are a large body of um, campuses. And when we talk about U.A., and as you will see on our graphics and all over the university, you will see this crest with a pelican atop. And that pelican really speaks to our piety. It's a symbol of piety, a symbol of dominance, a symbol of respect and regard for something greater than ourselves. And it's a big symbol of Caribbean unity. And I want you to remember that point about Caribbean unity. Now my task is to talk about easing the transition. And that word transition is a very, very big word. It speaks about this big step, these big moves that we make to get to this point. It speaks to some of you maybe coming from obviously a different Caribbean island. You may be coming from Guyana, from Trinidad and Tobago, 
from Belize, from the Cayman Islands, maybe even from Cuba. We have others from the global north, from America, from Canada. We have those coming from Africa, from Ghana in particular. We have our own Jamaicans. So you're coming from different spaces. You're moving away from your comfort zone, from a place that knows you well, from your community, from your home, and moving in as uh, Mr. McKenzie tells us today is moving in the moving into a whole new world, what we call the universe. You're moving into the universe, and that comes with a lot. Um, and like Dr. Paul said, he remembers being sweetly his baggage being sweetly packed by his mother to come here. And that idea of taking your bags and baggage to this new space is something that I want you to pay very close attention to. Because those bags, some of them are very heavy, some very big, some new, some old, some handed down from family. They are a metaphor for what you bring to this new world. They're a metaphor for all the things you're equipping yourself with to then stand up and deal with the, situa the new situation that you're coming into. Those bags not only carry the dishes and the pots and the clothes and the towels and the linen and all of that, but they also symbolize you carrying heavy burdens, you carrying your journey, your story, your fears, your anxieties, the positive things that have helped you along the way, the skills, the personality traits, you know, all those things that have equipped you to get to this point and that will take you a step further. They also carry your skill sets and your approach to coping with struggles and difficult situations. So those bags are very, very important to this new world that you're in. And in this new world, with those bags, one of the things that we need to pay special attention to is cultivating community. One of the things that we've learned from the pandemic, although we don't want to talk about it too much these days, but we must pay attention to the lessons that we've learned from, from these things. And one of the things we've learned is that we can't do this on our own. We need each other. And we have to work together to get a little further and to succeed. Right? And so in, our, in us building our community, we're branching out and stepping out and meeting new people, creating new friendships, creating new community, developing our skills, developing the things that we brought in our bags, throwing out the things we don't need and strengthening the things we do need to build that community as one university, one Caribbean, one diaspora. And as we talk about cultivating resilience, resilience, as you can see, requires relationships. Resilience, as defined by the Center for Developing the Child at Harvard University, is the capacity to adapt and thrive despite adversity. It is, it's the interaction of supportive relationships, biological systems, and gene expressions, the DNA that you've you've, you've um, been given from your family, from your parents, from the generation before. All of that is tied up into your resilience. And despite the widespread belief that people need only draw upon some heroic strength of character, science now tells us that it is the reliable presence of at least one supportive relationship and multiple opportunities for developing effective coping skills that are the essential building blocks for strengthening the capacity to do well in the face of significant adversity. And so I want you to recognize the importance of relationships, not only the relationships that um, were set from your homes and from your communities, but relationships that you'll be building right here as you create and cultivate community. And a quote by Jane D. Hall says, at the end of the day, the most overwhelming key to a child's success is the positive involvement of parents, and by extension, our relatives, the larger community, our teachers, our mentors, our friends, those that guide us and support us 
every person who's been involved in your journey from beginning to this point here has been an overwhelming part of your success and a key factor in your resilience. And as we look at mental health and well-being, we recognize that that too is a shared responsibility. It's not just us alone taking care of ourselves and trying to figure it out. It's each of us coming together to help each other. And what we do at the health center is we're here for you to help you when you realize that you're not managing, whether on your own or even with the support you have, that that may not be enough and that you're still being burdened by many of the things that are in our bags, so to speak, and you need a little extra help to figure it out before it's too late. And when we think about the clientele that come to the University Health Center, we, we looked at some raw data, you know, and we realized that the majority of our clients are female, just a small, little tiny bit are male, we also recognize that the majority of our clients are coming from certain faculties, primarily these three, the Faculty of Medical Sciences, the Faculty of Social Sciences, and the Faculty of Science and Technology. So what that kind of tells us is that as women coming to university, and if you're coming into a particular faculty, not that other faculties and other and another gender is excluded, but we do need to start paying attention to these patterns and recognize that as a woman, we may be carrying a lot and that coming into university, we may have to figure out how to regulate and we have, may have to recognize that if we're not regulating so well, if we're not coping so well, we might need to get a little extra help. And then the faculty you're in, depending on demands of that faculty um, and depending on how much you're stretched in that faculty and how prepared you are or aren't in that faculty, you may have some difficulties that um, stretch you, stretch your, lev your ability to cope and cause you to, to recognize that maybe you need a little additional help, which is available through our services at the health center. In this data, we also recognize that as much as 77% of our students are having anxiety, 67% are feeling depressed, 33% are reporting suicidal feelings, and as much as 13% are thinking of harming themselves. This is very serious and it's something that we can't take lightly. So we know that our students are struggling, right? And it may not appear that way initially. Some of you may be very aware of having a, a long-standing struggle that you're dealing with. And many of you may not even feel as if you're struggling. But by the time you get to UE and you enter into your courses and you see the, the workload and you start to really get integrated into things, you, start to, you may start to feel a bit overwhelmed and you may start to feel like you're struggling. And that's when we, are, we come in. What I want our parents and caregivers to know is that many of us are carrying around old stories from childhood that tell us that no one listens to me, no one cares about me and about what I want, and no one sees me. And if we can just take that time while our students are at UA succeeding, pressing forward, pushing against the grain, we must take time to listen. We must take time to care. We must take time to see them and each other. What we also realize is that given the cultural norms in our society where mental health stigma and discrimination are concerned, we are as a people less likely to seek mental health care. And what I need you all to help me do is to encourage our students, encourage each other to normalize help-seeking behavior, normalize getting help when you're feeling a little shaky, normalize looking at yourself and recognizing when things aren't so white, when your self-care regimen isn't quite in place, as Dr. Paul mentioned. We don't want people to be suffering in silence when there's help available. So at counseling, how you can refer your loved one to, to care, whether 
from home, from a phone call, from your visit of, of your loved one or your student here, or others among us in the audience who are friends and who will be rooming and integrating with other students, what you can do is that you can express to this person that you have some concerns and that you're worried about them and that they may need additional help which may come in the form of seeking treatment at the health center and at times it can get to the point where we too have to refer to the hospital. You want the loved one to know that you are unable to provide the level of support that they need at this time. That you've tried and you've given them as much advice, given them as much hugs, given them as, as much of your attention, but what you're seeing is causing you to have a concern that maybe more help is needed. All right, and you want to get your loved one the help before it's too late, before the concerns become major. You want your loved one to know that you want to give them the best help available. You don't want to give them any sidebar or side note type of help. You want to give them the best professional help available, and we know that it's available at the health center. And then when they take up the offer or they take your advice to seek help, you do follow up with them, check in with them to see how things went and how they're doing and to encourage them to keep their appointments. It's very important. What we find is that the more support the student has when they're going through these challenges, especially mentally, is the better they do. And that's where you come in. So I'm just presenting a little bit of the team. So here you'll see at the top, Dr. Debbie Ann Chambers, our head of counseling, and our senior counselor, Dr. Shields. To our right, we have our senior counselor at the Western Jamaica campus for those students in um, Montego Bay and St. James. And then below, you have me, of course, and our two junior counselors, our newest members, who are part-time, Ms. Da Denise Boxhill and Dr. Daniel Brown. This is my team. Without them, I couldn't be here. And what we do, we have one full-time psychiatrist myself, three full-time psychologists, two part-time psychologists. We also have a cadre of full-time physicians at the health center dealing with your general medical needs and a part-time physician as well as three nurses. We also offer pharmacy services, public health services. We also, also offer dental services in addition to our counseling services. And we do serve not only UA students, but also UA staff and dependents of staff. And at the Western Jamaica campus, we have a small group as well. The services that we offer, individual and family psychiatric consultations, crisis intervention and emergency services, 24-hour emergency mental health support, and we do also have a 24-hour helpline in addition to the many other services and group therapy sessions that we also offer at the health center. And of course, we're involved in research and we do um, uh, build bonds with um, our colleagues at the McGill University and the University of Florida, to name a few. Some of the things we actually do on campus, you'll see here that I'm doing IG lives with other colleagues, meeting and greeting first year students um, in different um, platforms. We also have workshops, which we do on mental health, to promote mental health, to educate about mental health. And we have the UA Health 24 hour helpline. And Dr. Debbie Ann does a program on um, 93FM News Talk. Uh, at least two Wednesdays per month, so we're, we're out there. And you may want to take a look or snap this, this slide, which tells you our address and our telephone numbers, how to contact us. And you can reach us through the email council at uemona.edu.jm. And my email is there as well, as well as the number for the Western Jamaica campus. And I have a little map here for you that may help you to kind of locate the health center. So you see the ring road in the middle, right? And then you will see the main gate and the main entrance. And then further from the main gate is the post office gate. And from the post office gate, you head So I hope that helps.
help to locate you a bit there. So I want to thank you so much for listening. Go back to the earlier side with the numbers. Yes, go right ahead. Thank you so much for listening, for participating. For If you have any questions, I'm here to take any questions you might have or comments. But before I end, I just want you to help me to build on this mantra that I learned yesterday at one of our orientation activities. When I say Yui, you say Oi. Yui. Yui. When I say Yui, you say Oi. Yui. Yui. Yui, Yui, Yui. Yui, Yui, Yui. Yui, Yui, Yui. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. No man, that too, that too dainty, right? It is Yui. Come, let's let, let's rehearse. Yui. No man, put a little vim into the thing, man. Yui. 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 Yeah, you're getting a little better. Get a little better. Give yourselves a round of applause. And thank you so very much, um, Dr. Richards, for, for sharing with us. And parents, you know, there's, there's, there's a stigma surrounding this issue of mental health in, in, in particular. I want us to be comfortable talking about it. And I want to be comfortable encouraging um, help-seeking attitude, right? I want us to be comfortable about that. So when our, our, our children speak about these things, we know we are steeped into some subculture. And, and, and so on. And sometimes you're tempted to do other things and to engage in other practices. But here we have a, a team of professionals um, who are equipped, who are skilled, who are able to help our students. And so we enlist and seek your support in encouraging your child or ward to make use of what is available to and um, for them. Thank you so very much, Dr. Richards. We are indeed a higher education institution. And the, the academy is a critical part of what we do. As parents and family members, it is important that you have at least some understanding as to how we function as an academy. And so we have with us this morning Dr. Heather Ricketts, who will share with us on academic matters. After she's through, we will entertain questions that you may have or concerns that you may want to share. And so I ask that you make welcome to the lectern, Dr. Heather Ricketts. Thank you very much, Mr. Mackenzie, our chairperson. Let me specially recognize the deputy principal, Dr. Paul, Dr. Richards from the Health Center, who just gave a very awesome presentation. Our guild president, who I think has left us and who also gave a very awesome presentation. All of us who are managers or members of the UE faculty, parents, family members, students, a very, very pleasant and warm welcome to you this morning. Um, I heard Mr. Mackenzie speak about the, he told uh, the Gill president he didn't know about the 620 number, that some of us had different numbers, and I certainly had the number 857535 from St. Augustine. So I'm coming from UE St. Augustine in Trinidad as a Grenadian student. So family members and parents, let me welcome you very warmly to UWI and to the UE Mona family. 
we are enjoying being back together again. You know that old song, we are together again? Well, we're not praising the Lord, we're not singing that today, but we are together again as a UWE family, face to face. Last year, when we welcomed again all of you parents and students to the campus for our parent orientation face to face, it brought back that hum and that rhythm that we are accustomed to on the UWE campus. Parents, let me congratulate you on your child's very excellent performance on their exams, CSEC and CAPE exams, to ensure that they are here today. And students who are here, let me congratulate you as well for your outstanding performance, which allowed you to matriculate into our various programs. I think you need a little bit of a round of applause. I hope that your experience with us for the next three to five years, if you're in MedSci, you're going to last about five years. If you're doing law, similarly, because when you finish that LLB, you're going to have to transition then into one of the law schools. So let me wish you all a very wonderful experience over the next few years. I hope that it will be rewarding, and I hope that it will be memorable, not just for you as the, par as the students, but also for you as the parents. If there are any foreign um, students here, I want you to stand up. Tell me where you're from. Tell us. Where are the Grenadians? Let me start with them, since that's my home country. Nobody? No one? Where are the others? Any foreign parents here? Let's just see you raise your hand. Welcome to the UE. Welcome to Jamaica. If you are a returning parent, welcome. If you are a brand new parent, warm, warm, special welcome to you. So I am tasked to speak about academic matters. And I'm going to keep it a little bit real. I'm going to talk about a few other matters because I too was a parent of UE students, one who floundered and had to drop out, and he, thankfully, he had to receive all kinds of um, counseling, etc. but he found his way, thankfully. And the other one who just went through seamlessly. So I'm going to keep it a little bit real, although I'm talking to you about academic matters. So let me tell you a little bit about UE and the academic requirements. And parents, I want you to listen up. I don't have a visual but I want you to listen up. If you have your little notebook or your phone, I like to take a lot of notes on my phone, you can do so. I think Mr. McKenzie and certainly Dr. Paul said that there are seven faculties at UWE Mona. Seven faculties. Well, right across the, um, the UWE system. You have the faculties of engineering, humanities and education, law, medical sciences, science and technology, social sciences, sport, and then we also acknowledge, not quite as a faculty, but similar, the Institute for Gender and Development Studies. And perhaps some of you in this room, as students, you are actually registered in the IGDS. Parents, let me tell you right off the bat, the communication going forward between the university will be with your child, not you. If you have to show up at UWI for anything, nobody will tell you or provide you with any information unless your student is with you and gives permission for the information to be shared with you. So please remember this. Your student is now an adult. I think um, when, when Deputy Principal Paul spoke about landing here on the Mona campus with his suitcase, Lots of love put into it, as, as Dr. Debbie, uh, sorry, as Dr. Richards indicated. Lots of love into, put into it. After that, he was pretty much on his own in terms of the communication with the university. And in those days, I'm sure, Dr. Paul, there was no WhatsApp, there was no email, so you had to write a letter. I remember those days, yes, it's a letter. And there was no sending money quickly through MoneyGram or anything. If your money run out, well, resilience had to kick in. And that's where the boat system came in on the halls. Everybody just put together everything, 
and they land the boat and everybody ate. Yes? There was no selfishness, really. So communication is going to be with the student. You, we will not communicate. I want to just remind you, with you parents, they won't, um, and they will not communicate with any other financiers of your students. So if it's a godmother or a godfather or whomever, the communication will be with your student. Your student is an adult capable of navigating UWE on his or her own. Of course, if they are floundering, they have to recognize, and we hope that they will have friends around them who will recognize and will say, look, I think you need a little support. Can you, let me take you, or I want you to go to the health center. No problem in that. No problem in that. I had to face that as a parent here a couple of years ago, and at the end of it, I think we came out better for it. So, I don't know what the enrollment status of your student is, but some of you, I imagine the majority of you are registering or enrolling full-time, full-time or part-time. If you're in most of the faculties, what full-time means is that you're doing five courses per semester. In some other faculties, I believe in science and technology, there might be more than five. But there are five courses, for example, in humanities, in law, in, in the social sciences, you're doing five courses per semester. And you will have, if you are part-time, you're doing less. You can't be doing the same number of courses as a full-time student. So for those of you who probably will be working and studying, do not register as a full-time student. Try part-time. And I want to tell you, part-time does not mean evening. So if you're a part-time student, you're going to have to deal with some day classes. So if you are part-time students who are here you're pro and you're working, you probably want to tell your um, employer that you are likely, once you get your timetable, you're likely to have to leave at a particular time and come back. And then you take back, the, they'll take back the hours. When I, when I sat as deputy dean, I had to write many letters from the faculty office of social sciences to say to employers, this is the timetable for the student, and so on and so forth. The academic year is divided into two semesters. Some programs have a third semester. So your student is starting parents. They're going to start classes on the 4th of September. And the teaching will end at the end of November. And they will begin their final exams in early December. At the end of that, that's semester one. Semester two starts in January, round about the third week. And that will go into April, about the third week of April. And then students go into exams until May. And that's the end of the semester, semester two. And for most students, that will be the end of their academic year. So year one will have, would have ended. Some programs require a, what is called a summer semester. So some programs have three and not two semesters. There is summer school. Almost every faculty now has summer school. So if a student wants to accelerate his or her program, they can take a course or two in the summer school, which is in the summer. Or if they have failed anything in semester one or two, and it's being offered in the summer, they might want to you know, make back up by doing it in the summer. Let me tell you, you have to settle down early. Students, the semester system can be brutal. It requires you to settle down early. Once the big orientation and excitement is done, you're going to have to settle down because almost immediately the assignments will begin. Coursework assignments, mid-semester exam, quizzes, tutorial presentations, etc. Those will be the forms of assessment that you will have. Each semester, I talked about when this teaching will start and end, but each semester is 13 weeks. So just remember that each semester is 13 weeks. The structure and delivery of your courses will be lectures, tutorials, labs. So the tutorial for parents who don't know and for students who are here and don't know, it's a smaller, intimate, 
class setting with not necessarily the lecturer, but more often a graduate student, somebody who is doing either a master's degree or a PhD, who is serving as a tutor, and they will discuss the course in small bites. So you might have a question or a set of um, calculations that you might have to do, um, and it's in smaller bites. So a tutorial, we generally don't like the tutorial to go beyond about 20 students per tutor. And so there is where you can really ask a lot of questions and seek a lot of clarification if you need to. There'll be classes that will start early, just letting you all know, and classes will go late. So the classes at Mona begin at 8 a.m. And the last class starts at 9, sorry, ends at 9 p.m. Okay? So sometimes, some of you students, you might have a long day. You might have an 8 o'clock class, and then you have a long break, and then the next class might be at 2 o'clock. If you have a break like that, you try and find yourself in a library or so, preparing for doing some advanced reading. I mean, I'm not saying you can't because you're young. You want to have a little fun. You laugh and chat with your friend. You eat lunch together. You goof off and so on. But make sure you find an hour or two. Go in the library. Take out your course outline. Make sure you know what the course outline's learning objectives are and the learning outcomes are. Ma many times when students complain about failure, and they have come to me, for example. I said, where is your course outline? They're looking blank. Have you read your course outline? Then you see the face fall. No. Every course, every lecturer provides a course outline for the course. I want all of you students to make sure that you are reading what the learning outcomes are. What do we expect you to know? at the end of this course. And so when we are examining you, we are examining against the learning out outcomes or learning objectives, I should say. So, assessments. I spoke a little bit about assessments. So let's look at performance. So you have sat this course and you have done very well. What does very well mean? Well, maybe I should say, what does well mean, or what does passing mean? So we operate with a GPA system, a grade point average. That's what GPA means. And what the GPA is, is a cumulative score that tells us how well we are doing, how well you are doing in your program. And it allows us lecturers to know whether you might need help. So to graduate from UWE, your minimum GPA, write it down, must be 2.0. Not 1.98, not 1.99, and you figure that you could graduate just like that with 1.99. If anybody has a GPA that falls below 2, and you have completed your program, for you to graduate, the faculty's dean has to write to the Board for Undergraduate Studies to ask whether this student could graduate with a GPA below two. And the Board for Undergraduate Studies is BUS. We call it BUS for short. And if BUS says yes, okay, we communicate and say you can graduate. If BUS says no, well, you, are, you will not graduate. So I just want to say the minimum GPA is 2.0. Now, with the GPA, for you to qualify for things like scholarships, for you to make the dean's list or the honor roll or honor society in a faculty, generally your GPA has to be about 3.0 minimum. And if you have a GPA like that, it provides opportunities for you to get scholarships, internships, even study abroad opportunities. Because when we sign these study abroad forms now, the entities want to know what the student's cumulative GPA is. And if the GPA is poor, you can't go. You can't participate. Parents, listen up again. Foundation courses. So your student 
is going to have to do three foundation courses. And they are critical. You could pass everything in your discipline and fail the foundation courses. You're not going to graduate, you know. And I've seen many students, they come and they cry. Once foundation course is missing, and they thought they finished, or they could graduate. You're not going to graduate if your foundation courses are not completed. So there are three, and one of them is called critical reading and writing in the discipline. Students call that CRIT for short, and it's not an easy course. A lot of us think that, boy, well, I already can, I know English, and I could write. Crit, that course requires a number of assignments, and it requires you to take the course seriously. So a lot of times, we have students who fail it. And you parents, you're going to be mad. You're going to say, but how you could fail a course like that? Chances are, your student did not give sufficient time to the course, or importance to the course. So please, when you're making your phone calls, those of you who, if the student is not living with you, when you're calling up here to find out how they're doing, or you're sending a WhatsApp, keep asking them, how is crit going? And put a smiley face next to it. Yeah, crit is important. This year, all of the faculties on the Mona campus are rolling out the foreign language policy. Last year, the university agreed that every new student coming to the UWI, wherever they're studying, must do a foreign language. If you have already done a foreign language at CSEC or CAPE, you can be exempt. So you just apply for that exemption, depending on the, core, on the grade that you have got. I don't remember what the grade is. It could be up to grade four, okay, for CAPE, and of course, one, two, three for CSEC. But everybody else, you will have to do a foreign language. And so it is going to be treated in many of the faculties as one of the foundation courses. It might just replace one of the foundation courses. Students who are here, starting, I believe, next week, you will have your various faculty orientation uh, programs. I want you to make sure that you attend all of your orientation programs. I am from the Faculty of, of Social Sciences, and next week, Monday, we are welcoming all of our new FSS students right here in this orientation tent. And then from in the afternoon to the rest of the week, the various departments that make up my faculty will be having their special orientation and welcome ceremonies. There, you will meet the head of department and the teaching staff, you, we will help you with any kind of registration challenges you have, and you will be able to get academic advice from the colleagues, okay? So please look out. I already saw some um, notifications going around telling you when those orientation and academic advising sessions will be. Just let me tell you that registration ends on September the 16th, all courses must be registered for by September 16. If you are late with your registration, it's going to attract a penalty, and you're going to have to pay, because then we have to open back up the system to allow you to register if you are late. And teaching will begin on September 4. Let me just, as I am wrapping up, talk about the importance of the regulations. Students and parents, your faculty handbook will be your Bible. You could have had a big brother who came here in 2011 and did the same program as you, or an aunt who graduated last year, or a sister, and did, was in the same faculty. The handbook that governs you is the 2023-2024 handbook. There are changes across years. And we don't want you to be looking at a 20, 22, 23 handbook when something changed this year. And then when you think you're done because you are following a wrong handbook, we have to be the bearer of bad news that you're not finished. So it's the 2023, 2024 handbook. As far as I know, 
All faculties have already uploaded their handbooks to their websites. So all you have to do is go to your website for your faculty, look for handbook. In my faculty of social sciences, you go on, you go to student resources, and then you click handbook, and the handbook opens up. And you go to the various sections, which are the departments, okay? And you'll see all your program details. At the front of every handbook, however, the beginning pages provide the regulations around things like if you want to withdraw, if you have to take a leave of absence, if you are required to withdraw, not you voluntarily withdrawing now, but you have done badly and you are required to withdraw, all of those regulations are there. Do not simply rely on your friends. Parents, I think it was said before, and I think Dr. Debian, um, Dr. Richards said it. University is a leveling of the playing field. Your student could have been brilliant. Maybe they, they were high flyers. Well, they're going to meet similar high flyers right here. It's a bit of a melting pot, and the first grade you get might be a shocker. And the people who might not necessarily have been the high flyers in high school may be doing very well. Some people are very great critical thinkers. And that's what university education requires. Not for you to be regurgitators, but to think very critically. Yeah? To ruminate on ideas, to go read and read further if you are in the reading disciplines, etc. And so you may find that perhaps your critical thinking skills, your analytical skills were not as sharp as you thought that they were and you might stumble a little bit. Well, if you stumble, you just brush yourself off and you get back up, yes? So you have to be proactive, organized, self-directed. This is not high school. I think someone said to you, this is not high school, and there are no extra lessons. It's you. You're going to have to do it by yourself. And no parent is going to be able to pay anybody the extra lesson fee, because we're not offering extra lessons, right? Parents, some, some of your students will falter. There may be failures. It's not always a setback. I remember when my son was here doing economics, it was a disaster, a complete disaster. And the day when I said, when my, him, my fa his father and myself said, I said it in the, in the meeting we had, I said, look, maybe you need to withdraw. Maybe you need to drop out. He was shocked. And the reason why he was shocked is, you know, sometimes us parents, we might be accomplished in our various fields. Our children may be struggling, but they feel afraid to tell the parent who is accomplished that they ain't doing so well. Maybe they chose the wrong program, etc., etc. He dropped out, but he found his way. And he is soaring and flying in his new discipline. So, I just want to tell you, Sometimes you're going to have to hug up a little bit of failure, but it's not the end. Let me tell you how the failure thing goes. If your student does poorly in semester one, so let's say we're starting now. First class is 4th of September. If your student at the end of the semester gets a GPA below two, your student will get a warning from the university. So a warning will be issued. And if he or she continues to do poorly in semester two, the student will be required to withdraw from the university. Sometimes that is the best thing that could happen to a student. I've seen it umpteen times. And when they withdraw, they can sit out for the year, come back in, or sit out for two years. Some of them sit out for longer. And when they come back, they can come back under a policy called academic forgiveness, where they can be given up to 30 credits, which would be more, more often 10 courses that they would have done previously and passed, and then they take up the rest of courses from there. So just letting you know. Some of you sitting in here may have chosen the wrong faculty and the wrong program. You will not be the first. You might figure it out midway. You realize, no, 
is not medicine I really wanted to do. I really want to do psychology. Or no, it's not law I wanted to do. I really want to do international relations. Or some of you are sitting in here, you wanted to do law because I know the high-flying disciplines, you know, and medicine, but you didn't get the grades to get in, to matriculate, and so you have to settle. And you feel that, you know, imagine you have to settle. It's only IR you could get to do, which is in international relations. Many of them who don't get into law tend to go into international relations or public administration and so on. Or if you didn't get into medicine, you've gone into the Faculty of Science and Technology, hoping that you will get in after the year, having done well. Sometimes, you know, we end up in the place where we're supposed to be. And some of you will end up liking where you ended up. Of course, some of you will want to transfer, but I'm just saying, if you didn't get your first discipline, it's not the end of the world. Not everyone will know immediately what you want to study, so sometimes, parents, you're going to have to be patient and understanding and provide support. Students, you're going to have a few stumbles along the way. Some of you might get ill. I've had so many broken hand and broken foot for um, orientation activities, because especially on hall. And so you see students coming on crutches. They were running, doing some activity, and they strained something or broke something, as the case might be and sometimes it sets them back for the first semester. But illness, injury, family matters, work, financial challenges, etc. Sometimes friend and company can set back your child. You know what friend and company means? Right, okay, I don't have to say more. A few opportunities and experiences. There will be exchange and study abroad opportunities. A lot of friendships and good relationships will be forged people from foreign, people from rural, people from urban. Those of you living on hall, there's the richness of hall life. Then you heard uh, Mr. McKenzie talk about all the activities that the halls provide, and, the, and generally the Office of Student Services and Development. There are many clubs and societies, co-curricular activities. We want you students to be rounded, not to just be the book person, Roundedness is important. And you know in Jamaica, there's a, you know what we mean by streetwise? You have to be streetwise. Some of you who come dainty only talking standard English, you're going to have to learn a, a bit of patois as well to be able to communicate effectively in spaces that you will find yourself. I remember when I first came to Jamaica, I came as a graduate stu student anyway, and I ordered a meal at one of the, um, one of the kiosks. And they asked if, if I was having or going. Having or going. It was, I was totally confused. I'm like, having or going? I said, but I'm having. I didn't know having means that you're sitting inside and dining in. And going means you're taking it away. So some of these things you're going to have to learn, and you will stumble here and there. We had a very good friend, Jamaican, who took myself and my St. Lucian friend. She used to take us to... Um, comedy shows, and she used to sit down, those were the days when we went to Green Gables. You Jamaicans remember Green Gables? So Alison would sit, she's right now, she is the PS in the Ministry of National Security. She was ambassador to Brazil. She used to sit down in between myself and my St. Lucian friend and interpret, because we didn't know what saying on the stage, but these were friendships forged. My daughter is named after her, Alison, beautiful Jamaican um, friend who I met, you know, and those, those are a lifetime. And my St. Lucian friend is my son's godmother. These are the things I'm talking about. And then for special mention as I wrap up now, parents, ensure that your students' fees are paid on time. Fees for semester one are due on September 1. If you can't pay the fees, there is a payment plan. And you can work out the payment plan. The deadline for that is September the 15th. I can tell you, and nobody is going to contradict me, I can tell you definitively, your student's performance is badly affected 
by their worry about fees. If their fees are not paid, they can't focus. You know many students say, Miss, we didn't have it. I couldn't pay the fees, right? And they can't focus because all the head wrap up on is the, is, the, is the fees. Or they have to run now and try and find a little job here and there, taking the time away from when they should be sitting down in the library or doing some group activity, etc. So please, I want to stress the importance of mental health. Well, I can't say it as eloquently as Dr. Richards did, but I'm going to say to all of you, the University's Health Center Counseling Service is critical. There is UE Helps. They have a 24-7 online counseling service. If your student needs help, if you need help, your friend needs help, please, and parents, you're going to be patient. Be patient. A lot of them, young people, are suffering because of COVID. We're now realizing the impact of COVID, you know. And it's affecting not just our students, but us as well. So the COVID impact, we are just beginning to see. Give support, develop trusting relationships with your student. It's very important for those of you who might be mature students, if you yourself are a parent or you're working, you're going to have to get some relief from family responsibilities. Your spouse or your children, if they are adult, are going to have to help with balancing things at home. I want all of you to embrace a growth mindset and allow parents, your student, to follow his or her passion. I know some of you say, the boy come up here, imagine his history, madu. What's wrong with that? Some of us think, you know, very stereotypically that boys mustn't do certain things or certain disciplines are not money earners or money generators. Well, I want to say that the world now is a great leveling place. Over the last few years, I've seen creatives. You know, it's a space now for creatives. If you're creative these days, the sky is the limit. So it's not just doctor and lawyer and engineer and so on. Yep. Anything else is possible. Dismantle those stereotypes. The world is the student's labor market now. And students, I'm going to talk to you. My mantra, something which I'm passionate about, is academic integrity, ethical behavior, decency, respect, and civility. You can't go wrong with those. You cannot go wrong with those. And believe you me, we are looking on. We are looking. And we know the ones who we can recommend, and we know the ones that we can't really recommend. Students, you're going to have to be honest in your um, activities and ethical in your behaviors. And I want you, all of us, want you to conduct yourself with civility and a certain decency. So even when you find your voice, as you have been encouraged to do, students, find your voice, but be decent and civil. Even if you disagree with somebody, it does not have to be a blow, a, 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 a blow up. It can be done very decently and with civility. Parents, support your student. You are their safety net. When they're balling in their room, you they're going to call. When they need any little support, you are the one. Yes, they will have friends, but ultimately you are your student safety net. And if you do all the things that we say you should do, graduation is going to be a wonderful time. When I see you all three years from now, or five years from now, or four years from now, it's going to be wonderful. So once again, everyone, congratulations on joining the UE family, and best, best wishes to all of you. Thank you. Hey, 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 don't, don't run it, don't run it. Such an excellent um, presentation, right? Very clear. But perhaps you may have one or two questions. We will take them at this point in time before we go to our lunch break. So any question for Dr. Ricketts? So there's a microphone in the aisle. If you step to the microphone, sir, um, then we will you know, take your question. So others who may have questions, just stand behind the gentleman in the aisle and we'll entertain your questions. 
All right. Um, someone from the technical team, sir, is coming just to make sure that the mic is on. Yeah, just check it on. All right, it's on. So, so good morning to everyone. All right, you mentioned there were three foundational courses. I got two. I'm not sure I heard the third one. Okay, so, so the foundation courses for each faculty, they are indicated in the faculty handbook. Right. In my faculty of social sciences, one foundation course is critical reading and writing in the discipline. The other one is Caribbean civilization. And the other is science, medicine, and technology. Okay. With the introduction of the new foreign language policy, in my faculty of social sciences, um, we are saying that a student who will be required to do a foreign language can substitute either Caribbean civilization, which is F-O-U-N, 1101, or Science, Medicine, and Technology, which is F-O-U-N 1201. All of that is in the handbook. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I think this lady had a... Yes, um, oh. morning. Good morning. Just to say, though, I recognize that the program does not have anything on plan for about security. And... Um, UA has had some bad security issues over the years, and especially as a first-time person, I would want to know that I'm sending my daughter to somewhere that's safe. So could you speak about that for me, please, and thank you. All right. Um, thanks much for that question. So um, tomorrow and Friday will be general orientation sessions for um, all new undergraduate students. At, at those sessions, we will speak clearly on the matter of um, security. So there'll be a presentation for all the students. We'll also have a, a booth where our security providers will be present to engage in conversations um, about same. Our regional and international students will also have benefited from a presentation on security yesterday at a special orientation session organized for regional and international students. But just to be clear, we acknowledge and recognize the importance of security and safety on the campus, and we'll be sharing with all our new undergraduate and graduate students on matters of security over, over the period, right? So thank you very much for your question, sir, but we will address it in general orientation for all our new students. Is there another question? Let's step to the microphone. We'll take um, one or, or two more questions. Our deputy principal has to leave for a meeting. Thank you so very much, um, Dr. Paul, for being with us. And we'll see you tomorrow morning at general orientation. Yes, sir. Good morning. Um, uh, the lady in, in aisle, could, could you just come to the microphone um, behind him? I know you, um, you wanted to ask a question. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Um, the question I'd like to ask, and I probably have a follow-up after I ask this. Because... You know, every time I hear someone saying mental health is a, it's a big issue and, and, um, and the way it should be treated, um, the question I have though, when should one seek, or when should you say it's time for me to seek mental health? When is the time? For example, if I, if I were trying to drive a nail through a piece of wood and the hammer hit me and my finger, and I, I'm like, I stuck it in my pocket or in my mouth or whatever, it come down, and I go back and bang again on my finger, at what point do I say, you know, I need some help? What point does one say it's time to seek help. mental help? Thank you so much for that question. And I hear the passion in the question. Um, I didn't quite catch the example, but I've heard many, so I'll just press from there. Yeah. All right, so as we said, when it comes to mental health, you start by understanding who you are, right? And how you have been managing, coping, getting through, getting by in your life. You also have your family around you who know you 
and can tell when things are not going well with you in terms of how you're responding, how you're behaving, how you're even coping or not coping. Mm -hmm. So that community that we talk about when we stress, building a community, it's, your, it's within yourself to understand yourself and to know when something is not quite working, when you're not coping, when you're not feeling right, when you're not feeling settled, when your emotions are getting ahead of you, when you're not functioning, you're not able to do the things you came here to do. Something is stopping you from getting through the day, getting on with things, moving forward, progressing something you might not even know what it is you can't call it you can't name it you don't have a clue and then on top of that your loved ones can pin you down and say but wait i know so you're normally going i know so me know you for talk or respond when people are taught to you or deal with you or helping you or whatever. That's not what I know. I don't know you to be someone who gives up so easily. I don't know you to be someone who is afraid to meet people or to go outside. I don't know you to be someone who stays in your room and just withdraw from everybody. I don't know you to be someone to talking about wanting to kill yourself. I don't know you like that. And I love you. And I want better for you. So I see something in you that tells me, mm -mm, mm. me not feel good about this. This not look good. It not feel right, right? And not only that, I talk to you, I engage you. I say, want me, want my daughter, want my son, what go on? How you feel that course? Me think you did have everything you need. Is it that the tuition fees is a problem and you're putting it upon your head, my son? Nobody put it on your head. Come make we talk about it. I see you. I am listening to you. I care about you. And I want to talk to you about oh these things, okay. these very hard things that they may be afraid to talk to you about. Okay? Oh. Let them not rely only on friend and company, as Dr. Ricketts so eloquently mentioned. Don't let them rely on friend and company. You are their foundation, right? You know them best. You are still wanting to learn more about them, wanting to understand them, and you still care and love them. And you understand that mental health is not obia or, um, um, you know, all the things, devil attack, spiritual attack. It is a health problem. It is a medical problem. It has medical intervention and treatment, right? Yes, prayer will help. Yes, love and support and hugs will help. Yes, talks will help, but that alone will not do in a lot of the cases. All right. I hope that's ha answering the question uh, a bit, but I, I could go on and on. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you for the question, all right? And I was to put up how you refer. So what do you do when um, faced with a situation where you are concerned about your loved one? And I'll just put it back up. As you can see, we have the, oops, we have the slide here. Right. We had a, a slide that tells you how to reach us, which some of you took pictures of. And we also had a slide that spoke about when to refer and how to refer, right? If you notice that your loved one is having, a cons having concerning behaviors, right? Especially if there's been a history. We don't want you to hide that information or keep that to yourselves. If there has been a history of your loved one, your student, having a need for counseling, having a situation that you know must be affecting them, that could be burdening them, that they've traveled in their, ba with, um, in their bags with, right? That bag they're carrying on their shoulder, heavy, heavy, and you know about it. Don't pretend like you don't know, right? If you know that they've had to seek treatment through their doctors, through their um, guidance counselors at the high school, through, their, through even an admission to hospital for a mental health issue, don't hold it to yourself and keep it to yourself. Let us know so that we can be ready 
to receive them and to help them quickly and early before it's too late. Before it's too late. One of the biggest ways that we can stamp out stigma is by attacking the situation before it's too late so that it doesn't end up in a situation where things are really bad and everyone is now talking about the situation and you know the stigma and, and discrimination is now active. We, want, we don't want to get to that point. We want to see the problem early and attack it early. Yes, with love and prayer, but also with professional help. That is what we're about, okay? Yes, please go ahead with your question, my lady. Um, good morning, everyone. I am just want to find out um, what is going on here today in orientation. Well, my son never get the opportunity to come with me today. And I'm just wondering if I have to come back with him tomorrow. Or is it going to be the same setting today as tomorrow? Or it's different? What would happen here today will be different for tomorrow? Okay, so... Today is an orientation session for family members, so parents, spouses, brothers, sisters, you name it, right? Guardians. So it's specific to parents and family members. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow and Friday, those sessions are for students, new undergraduate students. You don't have to take him tomorrow, but you need to send him tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So he needs to be present for the sessions tomorrow, Thursday the 24th, and Friday the 25th. Mm -hmm. Those sessions are specific to students. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be here, but um, your son needs to be here. Oh. Certainly if you want to accompany him, we won't turn you back, right? But we need to see your son too tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay. This session is really for parents and family members. It's actually a repeat session. We had one early in July. But we know some persons get late offers. Some um, are traveling with their child award from overseas and they come in today, which is moving day. So we have a repeat session today. Okay. But we had an earlier session in July for parents and family members. All right? Yeah, and the second question is um, in terms of boarding, um, I have to sign up today. And um, how would you be able to. In terms of what? Boarding facility. Uh, all right. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk with you about that. So uh, the, the student would have made an application for a hall of residence. And really, the, I don't know if your son got a late offer or early an offer. But your communication really ought to be with that particular hall of residence, right? So at the first orientation session, we had a segment where the parents could have met the managers for the halls of residence. They would have done a tour of the halls of residence. They aren't here today because they have to be in their respective hall receiving students, right? But if you, have an, if you have applied to a particular hall if your son has, then you can visit that hall today to have communication with the, the, the manager there about your application, all right? So that's what I would advise around that. And that goes for um, any parent who's having such a, an issue, a concern, or a challenge. All right? All right? Thank you. Thanks. Unfortunately, I can't take anybody beyond Wavel because we are out of time. So I'm going to take the two gentlemen. And um, then, yes, Dr. Uh, Dr. Before, before the parent who just asked the question, Mom, you asked about your son. What faculty is he? Accounts. So he's my faculty, social sciences. On Monday, we expect to see him back here as well. We will welcome all of our social science students, and then he will be told by his department. His department will be the Mona School of Business and Management. Write it down, MSBM. And he will know when he is to go to MSBM's orientation and academic advising session. But we expect to see him back here on Monday as well. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Right, so just, um, before, just, just before your, your question, I just want to say, just to so, um, reemphasize the point um, Dr. Heather um, made, tomorrow and Friday,
That's general orientation for all new undergraduate students. So all new undergraduate students must be at orientation for those two days. The week of the 28th of August will be faculty orientation for the various faculties. Our students will be provided with the schedule of their orientation session. So you'll know if you're in faculty of medical sciences, when is your orientation session? If you're in faculty of social sciences, so for example, they have their orientation session for new undergraduate students on, on Monday, and then they'll you know, break out into the departments of faculty advising and so on. You'll get a schedule that will detail that for you. So general orientation, Thursday and Friday, and faculty orientation the week of the 28th of August. Thank you. My question is, um, do you pay a percentage of the tuition and then you get a monthly if you pay the rest are so on? Okay, so at one o'clock today, right here, yeah. we'll have a presentation on financial matters. So you'll get a chance to benefit from that presentation and all the questions that you ask uh, that you may have around financial matters could be addressed then. So we are up on a break right now where you'll go to lunch um, or students, uh, facilitators, orientation facilitators in white can direct you where to go. Then you return at one. At one, we'll address the financial matters. So parents, family members, friends, well-wishers, please be back at 1 p.m. sharp where you will learn about financial matters. Okay, then. Right, but just to ease your mind, there is a payment plan available. The details of which you'll learn about at 1 o'clock. All right? Wavell. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, this, based on your statement about only students being allowed to attend on Thursday and Friday, then it brings a question to my mind in regard to security that the good gentleman asked. R right, so just to be clear, though, Wavell. I, I, I'm not saying only students. No, but you said we should drop them off, which is not for us. That's, those are your words. Right, so it is not for parents. Then, but it doesn't mean that a parent may not attend. Yes. Right, but, but it's not for parents, right. Go well, ahead with the security question, though. The, um, the question is how, if the parents are not present when you are making the general presentation on security, how will they cons their concerns be addressed? or even if they have follow-up questions to be addressed. Because students are going to be bubbling and happy to attend school and may not be so concerned about security until something happens. So we need to understand how the parents will be in a position to understand the safety of the, the surrounding and how they can get redressed if there's anything that happened um, untoward. Right. Good question, um, um, Sir Hines. So the... the the information, so a part of what he mentioned is, I mean, our students are responsible students. They are no university students. And a lot of the information will be conveyed to them as, as, as adults. You know what I mean? So in this particular scenario, you can really, you know, relate to your, your, your child or ward on matters of security. Certainly, though, information is available on our, our website that parents can access around matters of security. We have various layers of security on campus just to share with you this briefly. So there's a campus police post here on campus. Then there is the um, campus security, which are high security personnel. Then there is the, uh, uh, um, a security company in the form of King Alarm that offers us another layer of security on campus. And all of these operate under the auspices of the director of security. So there's a Mona police force, that's a Jamaica constabulary um, force here on campus, there's a post. Then there are campus security hired, um, trained, uh, if you may, district constables that, that, that play that role. And then there is King Alarm, which is an engaged security company that offers armed security on the campus, right? There are, the campus is covered with um, surveillance cameras. Across the length and breadth of the campus, there's a central monitoring station that monitors that, you know, as well. So in our halls of residence, there are security personnel to enter those spaces. In our faculty, there's restricted access in certain spaces. So there, there, there is a comprehensive approach. Huh? 
Okay, there's also a, an app you learn more about, the Rush Alert app, where students can download that app. They can, um, parents um, can share in this. So they can say, I am at X point at any point in time. You can follow that to track the movements um, of, of, of your students, right? And this and more information will share with the students tomorrow when the director of security um, engages in that regard. But rest assured, we do our utmost best um, within this space to um, share on um, security here on campus, right? Just to say to you within your break, please benefit from our booth holders. There's Scotiabank, there is, you'll hear from them later, there's Digicel, there's um, Hardware and Lumber, there's SWAT, which is Student Work and Travel. Um, there is Jamaica National as well. These are key partners in us delivering on orientation um, here today and throughout the season of orientation. So Digicel, um, we have SWAT, which is Student Work and Travel, um, Scotiabank, Hardware and Lumber, and Jamaica National are here with us today. So we are up on a break now. You will take your break. Please be back here promptly at 1 o'clock to benefit from financial matters. You'll hear also from our um, service providers as to how you can, ways and means that you can finance the higher education sojourn of your child and world. Thank you very much for being with us this morning. You have been a wonderful, wonderful audience. See you at 1 p.m.
the afternoon session of our family orientation. I hope that you'd have gotten something to refresh yourselves and we will now proceed to have this conversation in a critical era around financial matters. Um, we will also hear from briefly from some of our um, financial services providers here with us um, today on how they can assist you in funding the higher education of your child or your ward. But to kick things off this afternoon, we have with us Ms. Kimberly Henry. Ms. Henry is a customer service officer um, working through the, the bursary. I ask that you give to her your undivided attention. At the end of all the financial presentations, we will take your questions um, regarding the subject matter. So may I ask that you put your hands together and make welcome to the lectern, Miss Kimberly Henry. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. No, man, do better than that, man. Good afternoon, everyone. I know we're going to talk about serious business, but you know we have to nice up ourselves, right? Oh, the, the, the mouse isn't moving. It's not, it's not moving. So, my name is Kimberly Henry, and I would like to first welcome you all to the UWE Pelican family on behalf of the bursary department. Now, I'm specifically uh, representing the Student Administrative Services section, more commonly known as SAS, along with the Billings and Receivables section, both subsections within the bursary. So, just to introduce you to some of our roles um, as to what we do here in SAS and Billings and Receivables. So, Regarding any financial queries that you might have, any financial matters as students, we are the persons that you need to know. So you need to come to SAS if you want to ensure that you receive um, your billing um, information, that it is accurate, and that you receive this in a timely manner. We are also here to provide you with financial counseling. So regarding any queries that you might have, any issues, any concerns, we are the persons that you come to to have that being clarified. Now, in terms of the persons who are benefiting from scholarships or you've made payments at any external location, we are here to ensure that said payments are routed to your account in a timely manner and to ensure that your statements are updated as such. We bill and collect from on-campus um, clients as well or donors. So for the commitment fees, if you've not yet paid your commitment fee as a new student, you can still go ahead and do so. What it basically does is that it secures your spot here in the institution and shows us your willingness, your, your commitment rather, to come to the institution. Now, I want to make note that this is merely a deposit that you make towards your account. So it is not a case that you're giving you $20,000 and you won't be able to benefit from such. So for any charges that are applied to your account, for example, the miscellaneous fees when you register, the commitment fee can be used towards that to help to offset the charge that you can anticipate for the miscellaneous fee. It is also something that you have to pay by a stipulated deadline. More often than not, the deadline is outlined in the acceptance letter that you receive. 
However, if it is not explicitly outlined in your acceptance letter, just note that the commitment fee is due at least 30 days after the date of that letter. But it is a non-refundable uh, payment that you make to the institution. So for whatever reason you have a change of mind where I hope you do not, um, you cannot um, claim same as a refund. So at any given time, students can anticipate for at least three main charges to be applied to the account. First thing is that you will be charged tuition. So once you register here at the institution, you can anticipate for a tuition charge to be applied to your account. Now, it's not a one size fits all when it comes on to the tuition fee. So the tuition itself, it is determined by the program of study whether you're full-time versus part-time, your nationality as well can also play an important role to determine which tuition charge is applied to your account. The miscellaneous fee, it is a mandatory fee that you pay once per academic year. So the miscellaneous fee itself, it enables your ability to utilize services, for example, dental, health services at the health center. It's a, a portion of it is also sent over to the guild services, and um, you are able to use the library services as well. So the miscellaneous fees are basically small fees that comes together to ensure that your experience as a student, it is um, a rewarding one. Now, residence fees will only be applied to your account if you are residing on hall. So if you are seeing any residence charges on your account, but you are not living on hall, then naturally that is a discrepancy which you need to bring to our attention, and we can give you the necessary advice. But like the tuition, the residence fee that is applied to your account is dependent on the hall that you choose to live on. We do not show the information for 138 student living, those particular halls. So for example, Irving Hall or uh, Leslie Robinson, just to name a few, uh, those you get the invoice directly from 138. However, if you're living on a Mona operated hall, so for example, Taylor Hall, Mary C. Cole, Rex, Chancellor, just to name a few, you will see that information on your statement of accounts. So how do you go about finding these fees that I've mentioned? So all the fees are available to, available to you online. So from any search engine, you can type in UE check fees, and you'll be brought to us in an interface that looks like this. You basically go to the link for the information that you're looking for. So if you're looking for the tuition fee as an undergraduate student, then the first link would apply to you. However, if you're looking for residence information, whether it is for a Mona operated hall or a 138 hall, you can select the link of choice. Also from this platform, you can access the e-commerce platform where in which you can make payments online via our e-commerce services. And payment made via e-commerce will reflect on your account at the same time once successful. So as mentioned earlier, the miscellaneous fee, it enables certain services, certain benefits as a student. So the miscellaneous fee can either be one of two things. If you're living on a hall, then the miscellaneous fee that is applicable to you, sorry, it is $38,937, Jamaican dollars. If you are commuting, meaning you do not live on a, any form of halls on campus, but you are traveling to school, then the miscellaneous fee that is applicable to you is $30,437. Both these figures already include the cost of your, of your ID card, sorry. So when it comes around to the time for you to take your IDs, then you can present to them your proof of payment that you have paid the miscellaneous fees. If you by any chance lose your receipt and you need to go ahead and take your ID pictures, then you can come to us at SAS and we'll be able to provide you with the support to bring over to the ID room so you can take your ID, card, ID pictures. Payments can be made at a few locations. The more popular ones would be the uh, bursar cashiers and also via e-commerce platform. Now the bursar cashiers, they're located at the building right there um, where SAS is as well. So when you exit the building at the Undercroft, the next office, that's where the bursar cashiers are. The e-commerce platform as well is another common one. Payments made at the e-commerce 
As said before, along with the bursary, reflects on your statement of accounts at the same time. So once you make the payment, you will see it being posted to your statement of accounts. However, if you make payment at any other location, you can anticipate a delay in the process, processing of the payment for it to be reflected on your account. So for example, Western Union, Paymaster, Bill Express, NCB, Educom, JN Bank, all of them you can anticipate for a processing time of at least 24 to 48 business hours. So if by any chance you've made the payment at any one of these locations and you're not seeing it being reflected on your statement of accounts, then you need to send a copy of the receipt to us so we can aid you in locating the payment and subsequently updating your statement of accounts. You are reminded that under no condition should you be giving money to anyone outside of the authorized payment entities as prescribed by the institution. All right, and also another important information to note is that all these payment locations, they already have our banking information. So there's no need for us to provide that to you at this time. Um, what we urge you to do, however, is to ensure that your ID number is included in the transaction. So that is the way we know which payment should be applied to which account. So, just to introduce you to the UE e-commerce platform. So you would visit the e-commerce platform at the link here, eservices.mona.ue.edu. If you do not have an account with us on the e-commerce platform, then you would have to create the account. After you've created the account, then you would need to register the card of choice. And thereafter, once the card is successfully registered, then you go ahead and you make payments. So you create the account, register the card, and then you make payment. Now the e-commerce platform supports quite a few currencies. So the manual that is available on the website as well, which is highlighted by the arrow here, it will give you some step-by-step -step instructions on how you go about registering your card, how you go about making payments, um, which cards are supported, which currency is supported, stuff like that. However, if you have any questions, if you're having any difficulties with the e-commerce platform, then the first place you contact would be the Mona Information Technology Services, AKA MITS, and if they're unable to resolve same, then they will give you the necessary information or guidance. So, for all payments, the miscellaneous fee, the tuition, and if you're living on haul, all payments are due September 1st, 2023 for semester one. For semester two, the payments are due on January 12th, 2024. Now you realize that I've quoted two different payment dates. This is because for the tuition as well as for the residence, it is divided into two equal parts and you pay the first half in semester one and the second half in semester two. So for example, if your tuition for example, remember, it is 300,000 for the academic year. Half of it would be charged, which is 150,000 in semester one, the remainder in semester two. So if you're unable to pay for the entire academic year at once, then you are able to pay by semester. And that is what is due by the stipulated deadlines here, the semester's fee, not the annual charge. So if you're concerned in how you go about um, funding your tertiary level education. At the end of the day, it is very expensive. But at the end of the day as well, UE has some of the most competitive rates. So these are some of the popular options in terms of financing your way through tertiary level education. Upfront, you can pay by cash. However, if you're unable to take advantage of that or you're unable to pay in cash, you can look into government entities. For example, the Ministry of Education, they offer quite a few scholarships, they offer quite a few grants. You have some private entities as well that offer scholarships. So Grace, for example, um, they offer scholarships to tertiary level um, students, sorry, and you're able to use that to aid or to help to, you know, offset the charges every little mecca muckle as they say here in jamaica so any assistance that you can actually get i urge you to go ahead and take advantage of that if you by any chance are um, a staff member or your parent is a staff member 
you can look into the option for tuition exemption or salary deduction as well. Um, office of Student Financing, the, which is an office here on campus, they offer bursaries and grants as well for students. So in a few, I will be giving you their contact information or you can check out their website, Office of Student Financing from any search engine and you can peruse the scholarships and the grants that are there. They're all listed there and they're listed by the faculty information as well. So if you're in the Faculty of Humanities and Education, you can look which scholarships are applicable or available for you. These are some other options. Uh, so we have the PATH scholarship. If you were on PATH during your secondary level um, education, you can have that being transitioned over to the tertiary level education. Uh, you can reach out to the Office of Student Financing regarding PATH. How do you apply for PATH to be used here at UWE? And they will guide you of such. For the Students Loan Bureau, very, very, very popular option. So you can go ahead and check them out, see if you need to get a grant, um, see, not a grant, sorry, a loan from them to offset your financial obligation here. So as mentioned earlier, the Office of Student Financing, they have a budget in place to help with scholarships, with grants, with bursaries. But they're also here to offer, for example, meal subsidies, um, book grants, and stuff like that. There are quite a few options that you can benefit from when it comes on to the Office of Student Financing. So I've mentioned the tuition, where do you find it? I've mentioned the payment dates. However, if you're unable to pay the semester's fees in full by the stipulated deadline, then you can go ahead and take advantage of the installment plan. So this breaks down the semester's fee into smaller portions. So to qualify for the tuition installment plan, you first need to make sure that you're registered. So in registering for your classes, that means that you would have selected all your classes, you're not waiting for any overrides to be approved, all your courses are seen on your timetable. You need to make sure as well that the miscellaneous fee, it is paid in full. At 25% of the semester's tuition is due upfront, that is a deposit that you're making. And if you, by any chance, you're a returning Pelican and you have any outstanding balances from your previous time here, you need to make sure that that is cleared in its entirety as well. For the residence installment plan, this is applicable for the halls that are operated by UWE. So remember I mentioned Taylor Hall, Mary C. Cole, Chancellor, those particular halls, not the 138 halls. So for the residence installment plan, in order to benefit from this, you need to make sure that the residence charge is reflected on your statement of accounts. Meaning you've moved on and you see where the charge for residence is on your account. The miscellaneous fee is also a requirement here as well. And 25% of the residence fees, it needs to be paid up front. And again, if you're returning Pelican and you have any outstanding balances on residence, then this needs to be cleared up in its entirety. To get onto the plan, this is something that you request on our online system. So first, you would need to go to the Bursary Online Student System, more commonly known as BOSS, and sign in using your credentials, which is your ID number and your password, and there you'll be able to access the form once the aforementioned requirements are met. The plan is now available. It has been open since August 10th, but it will close on September 15th. So you have a, a roughly around two more, at least over a, two to three weeks thereabouts to get onto the plan. The plan is something that you request per semester. So if you're on the plan for semester one and you would like to benefit from same again for semester two, it does not automatically roll over. So you'd have to make sure that you've met the requirements again for semester two and you apply by the stipulated deadline once that is available. So for the plan, remember I mentioned that it is something that you pay the install, in, in, in installment. So whether it is for the tuition or it is for the residence, it enables your ability to pay in smaller portions per month. So if you pay 25% upfront, 
then the remaining balance will be divided into three equal parts. You can get up to three months for either plans to clear off the semester's balance. So that means you would pay 25% in September, October, and November. By the time finals come around, you should not be having a balance on your account because you cannot sit an examination with a balance outstanding. So that brings me over to the penalties. So if you do not meet your financial obligations by the stipulated deadlines, then there are some penalties that can be enforced. The first thing is that you'll be seeing a 1% late fine being calculated on the balance owed and applied to your account until the account itself is regularized. In addition to that, you will be barred from sitting your exams and you will be barred from certain facilities on campus. The reason you will be barred is because a financial hold will be activated on your account and this restricts your ability to see grades, to access records, to access certain financial service, to access certain facilities, sorry. You are unable to see your grades, you're unable to see your transcript with a financial hold. So I urge you to treat your financial obligation with utmost urgency so that your experience as a student, it is not affected in a negative way. For the extremely delinquent accounts, meaning you've owed the institution for an extensive period, we have the right to transfer your account to a collection agency and now to the credit bureau. Now remember, we are young persons coming up, on the up and up as they say, and we want for our credit score to be in good standing. And it starts with ensuring that we don't have to transfer your information to these bodies. So, just to introduce you to, whoops, to the bursary website. So for SAS, for some of the services that are available online, you can request this through the bursary online student system. So from any search engine, you type in UE online systems and you click on the option for bus under the section for students. From there, you sign in using your ID number and the password and you'll be able to access some of the forms that are available online. So for example, I mentioned the installment plan, but you can also see your unofficial statement of accounts. You can see what your transactions have been over a period of time. Um, you can also use this particular platform to request official copies of your statement of accounts or if you're benefiting from any grants, any scholarships, and they require for you to provide a, an official document from the institution to outline your charges, that is what we call a tuition letter. This is where you go to request that particular letter and we will send a copy to your email so there's no need for you to necessarily come to collect the physical copy unless it is important or, you know, they ask for the hard copy. So we try to make the services uh, as convenient as possible, not to say that we don't want to see you, but we just want to make sure that it is efficient and um, convenient for you. So I realize we have quite a few parents and guardians here today as well. So this particular portion is very, very important. Now for mommies and daddies and guardians, if you are coming to do business on behalf of your child or ward, you are encouraged to have them en enter your information in the proxy form that is available on the bursary online student system, BOSS. What that means is that we are now able to give you information or to give you the document on behalf of the student. Now I know a lot of persons are saying, then why I need to do that and me pay the school fee? I, I understand that, I understand that completely. But from the legal aspect, your child or your ward is the client of the institution. Your child or ward is considered to be the adult. So if she or he is sending you to do business on their behalf, then that needs to be communicated to us here in SAS. Otherwise, we will not be giving out any information or documents to anyone coming to say that Kimberly, for example, sent me to do this. So just to recap, uh, some frequently asked questions. Are you able to pay your fees by semester? You certainly can because you're billed accordingly. 
How do you check your statement of accounts or your balance? You sign into BOSS using your password and your student ID number, and you will see the unofficial statement of accounts there for you. Can someone be sent to do business on your behalf? Sure, but communicate that to us using the proxy authorization form. Where can you make payments? You can make payments at the bursar cashiers, you can make payments online via e-commerce, or you can go to NCB, Educom, JN, Western Union, Paymaster, or Bill Express. Uh, just an important note here. If you, by any chance, you're not seeing the option for bill payment, meaning you're not seeing us being listed as a payee, and you want to do a third-party transfer, I would not encourage that. Now, the reason for it, you would be basically sending funds over to the account, and you'll be wondering why it's not posted to your, your statement of accounts. When you do a third-party transfer, it does not give you the option to include your ID number. And without the ID number, we do not know whose account needs to be updated. So if by any chance that option was used, you need to send us a copy of the receipt so we can aid you to have the account being updated. What is the difference? Another question, what is the difference between the tuition letter and the statement of accounts? The tuition letter will outline the transactions, uh, no, outline the charges that you can anticipate for the academic year. The statement of accounts, however, will outline the transactions, meaning the charges versus payments and your balance um, on your account. How long does it take for the payments to reflect? Now, that is determined by the payment option used. So as mentioned earlier, the bursar cashiers and e-commerce instantly, and it will be on your account. All other options you can anticipate for 24 to 48 business hours. If by any chance we have any international students here today and your only option is to do an international wire transfer or wire, transfer over, wire transfers overall, it is the longest option. It can take up to three weeks for it to be reflected. So if by any chance you can make the payments at any other location as mentioned before, then you are encouraged to do so as well. And if the payment is not there within 24 to 48 hours, simply send us a copy of the receipt and we will be doing our best to locate same. What is U.S. bank account information? That information is not needed. Uh, all the authorized payment locations that I've earlier outlined already have our banking information. I urge you, however, to ensure that your student ID number, it is included in that particular transaction. But if you have any other questions, you can always reach out to us. We are available Mondays through to Fridays, 8.30 to 4.30. And our contact number is 876-618-5066. Or you can contact the uh, university switchboard um, and ask to be transferred to us. Our email address is customer.services at uimona.edu.jm. And we're available on WhatsApp at 876-280. 8238 for chats only. No calls, no video calls, no voice notes. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Ms. Henry, for a very clear presentation. We are going to take the questions, but we're going to do all the financial presentations and then we take a, a block of, of, of questions. So I'm going to invite a representative from Scotia Bank, Mrs. Lavonne Smart McFarlane. She's a branch manager to, to come to us as a share on financing um, opportunities through Scotia Bank. Then we'll hear from um, SWAT, that Student Work and Travel International, Mr. Shavoy Hutchinson will come to us. And then David Anderson, Youth Banking Representative from Jamaica National. Uh, you know, through SWAT, and a lot of our students go to work and travel to make money to pay their tuition fees or their housing fees and so on. So we'll hear from the different ones as to how we can do this. They'll all remain here, and then we'll entertain your questions in relation to financial matters. So um, your time begins now. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. 
All right, that's great. Well, my name is Lavani Smart McFarlane, branch manager of Scotiabank UE here on campus. And basically, I'm just here to let you know how we're gonna make it easy for you, the students and family members, to make it easy for you with your banking opportunities, right? So I only have three minutes. So over there, we have our booth, and we will be showing you how to open your account. The process can start online, and when you have this account, you'll be able to get your debit card for your day-to-day -day use, and the online platform to help you with your day-to-day -day transactions. So the good thing is, we are not just here on campus for our students, we are here for the family members as well. So if you need funds to assist with the tuition, we have a Scotia Plan loan that can assist you with that. If you have a mortgage right now and you realize that the monthly payment keeps climbing, we can switch your mortgage for you for 0% processing fees. So we are here on campus for both students, family members, as well as staff on and off campus, and we are right across the street, open 8.30 to 2.30. And remember, we are here today, so if you need assistance with opening an account, myself and Yannick, we are here ready and waiting for you to start that process. All right, do I have your commitment to stop by and for us to assist you? Yes? All right, I look forward to it. So thank you so much for your time and congratulations to all you students out there. Thank you. All right, good afternoon again, everyone. So my name is Shavoy Hutch. All right, good afternoon again, everyone. Uh, my name is Shavoy Hutchinson. I'm here from SWAT Productions Limited. Uh, SWAT Productions Limited is a J1 cultural exchange um, agency that is located right here on campus at the Students' Union. Um, we have been in operations since 2006, so that's um, quite a number of years in the industry. Uh, for those who don't know, the J1 Cultural Exchange Program is, uh, well, as the name states, it's a cultural exchange program that allows full-time university students um, to travel to the U.S. during the summer from May to September, where you're allowed to engage in a number of cultural activities. You get to meet new people, network, internationalize your resume. And most importantly, you're allowed to work while you're there to offset your expenses. Um, you can visit our website at swatltd.com for more information. And we have a booth at the back there, so you can stop by if you have any questions. Thank you. Hi, uh, good afternoon everyone. My name is David Anderson and I'm here from Jane Bank. Uh, we are here with our Jane Way Ambassadors and as you know, Jane Way stands for Jane Wise Aspiring Youth. Um, these ambassadors are students here also at the UE um, Mona campus. So definitely they're here to help with onboarding and stuff like that. And I'm encouraging everyone to check out our social media handles, Jane Way and also the Jane Bank page. Um, we have a booth set up at the back. You know, you can always come and try and sign up um, to get your accounts. Um, if you're interested in other products, you know, we offer the entire Jane group of products. So if you're interested in um, fund managers or life insurance or any of those, you can always visit and we'll sign you up as a lead and pass it on um, directly to a representative that can assist you. I know a lot of persons are always interested in signing up for accounts. You know that we have a Jane Bank branch location here on the campus also, or a UA branch. So even if you're not able to do it today and you don't have everything, you can always visit the UA branch and they'll be um, more than happy to provide the necessary assistance to ensure that you get your accounts open in a timely manner. We also have the packages here also if you'd like to collect them. So when you do get time, I'm encouraging everyone to just swing by and uh, check out the booth, all right? 
Thanks. Uh, thank you very much. So we're going to entertain your questions now for anybody who is present on the platform here, um, or representative from the, the bursary, or from the, the financial institutions. You can also check our website for information on scholarships and bursaries um, as well. That's the Office of Student Financing is where you can go to find that information. Please go ahead, sir. If you have a question, parent, family member, spouse, just um, hit the microphone. Just to remind you that um, you can get registration assistance in the assembly hall, that's to my left. And please check out any of the booths to uh, my right, Beat Hardware, Lumber, JN, Scotiabank, SWAT, or Digicel. All right, thank you again. I think it's afternoon now. Um, firstly, let me say to the young lady who did the bursary presentation, that was a very good presentation. Thank you very much. Right. I have two questions for you, though. Um, so tomorrow, um, students will be coming in starting tomorrow, and they'll be doing their IDs. I noticed that you said the miscellaneous covers the cost of the ID. It includes the cost of the ID. I, I have made two payments so far, but none of them has said specifically miscellaneous. I think I'm reached about 120000 already out of the school fee. Is it that she can carry any one of those receipts, or she has to carry a receipt specifically that says miscellaneous payments paid to, in order for her to get her ID? OK. All right. Well, thank you so much for that question, and uh, thank you for your feedback as well. Now, for the uh, ID room, they prefer for the receipt to say miscellaneous fees. However, if you've made a payment, the first thing that is deducted is the miscellaneous fees. All right, good. So that is where you would come to SAS, and then we can give you a slip to say that the payments made covers the miscellaneous fees. So you don't have to make an additional payment to say miscellaneous fees. All right, thank you. And this is my last one. The, when I, as you were speaking, you told me to go and check something. So I, I was following what you were doing, so I went online. Mm -hmm. So I saw the school fee. There was a PDF that came up with the school fee for the SOSI. Mm -hmm. So I can pick up that figure. The question is, does that figure that I see on that PDF, does it include the miscellaneous or I need to add the miscellaneous to that figure to know what my total amount for payment should be? And finally, could you put back up the miscellaneous figure? I couldn't type it fast enough while you had it, the $30,000 or something, so that I can write it down after. And, and that's it for me. All right, so for the fees, that are available on this particular link. I'm assuming this is the one that you went to? Yes. So when you click on any one of these links, you'll be taken to a PDF document. Right. And the information that is there is only applicable for the information that is in the title. So for example, the one that you're referring to that has the tuition information, that right. is solely for tuition. So the miscellaneous fee is not included. So you'd have to look on the link for miscellaneous fees. So for the miscellaneous fees, as you've asked, these are the miscellaneous fees that are applicable for those who are living on campus, who are residents, whether it is a 138 hall or a Mona-operated hall. However, if you're not living on hall, then the miscellaneous fee at the top, 30000 and change, that is what is applicable to you. All right, thank you, you add this much. to whatever other charges. Other charges. All right. Um, is the thing ready now where you can actually go and see a statement of account? Yeah, man, once you are a student, once you have your ID number and you, you have do? any transactions, it is available to you instantly. All right, thank you. Sure. Good morning. Oh, no. Somebody can... <laughs> that is it. Yes, good morning again. Good morning. Seeing that um, the deadline for tuition fees is September 1st, for the persons going through student loans, what if the loan isn't granted in time for what happens next? Okay, very good question and thank you for your question. Now, if you're benefiting from financial assistance, whether it is student loan or any other um, financial institutions, then it needs to be communicated to the UE. 
For a student loan, for example, we oftentimes have a constant dialogue going in, so going on. Sorry. So they usually communicate to us which students they are funding. What will happen, yes, I know that they take quite a while sometimes, and the fees are not added to your account at the time of the deadline. And what will also happen is that if it goes on for a prolonged period of time, you will see where late fines are added to the account because we cannot control same. However, when SLB actually makes a payment or from one of those, uh, what you would call, scholarship entities, then we can therefore go onto the account and adjust it in terms of the late fines. But you should still be okay for the first part of this um, academic year. When it comes on to mid-semesters though, I still encourage you that you be on the uh, loan process to make sure that it is fulfilled in a timely manner. Okay, and next question. For the school years that have three semesters, is the tuition split into three? Which program is it? Um, it's pharmacology. Pharmacology, well, I know dentistry has a compulsory summer semester. Pharmacology, it is billed in two semesters. It's two. So $10,000 US dollars for the um, academic year, 5000 in semester one, 5000 in semester two. If there is by any chance a compulsory summer um, period for pharmacy, I'm not aware. But if there is anything like that, then it should already be covered in the uh, tuition. Okay, thank Unless you. it's a receipt or anything like that. There's okay. a charge. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good just afternoon. to follow up on the miscellaneous fee, mm -hmm. quickly, just a clarity regarding inclusive of ID, dental, and health. Could you explain the dental and health aspect? Is it that you're provided with a card or the facilities here, if in case there's an accident or emergency, will be um, allotted to the student? Okay, thank you for your question. So in terms of payment of the miscellaneous fees, once you've made the payment, each student is uh, given a health card. Uh, the health care provider this year is Sagicor, so you'll be given a health card. And then you can use that particular card at the health center to help to offset any um, charges that might have been enforced for seeing the doctors there. I also believe that it can be used off campus as well. So you are given a health card once you've made payment of the miscellaneous fees. Good afternoon, Kimberly and parents, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, my question, so I got two daughters. Mm -hmm. One first applied to your university um, and got to the point where she paid the commitment fee. But then, because I didn't, I, I was excited for a university to accept her with a scholarship, because she got the money. Mm -hmm. So Howard, accepted her with part scholarship, and I was excited. Um, then the, my other daughter applied here and got accepted as well. Now, I know you say that the 20,000 is non-refundable, but can it be rolled over? Shouldn't you, shouldn't you uh, rather than take, uh, shouldn't you, can't it rolled over to the other one who's going to be here? <laughs> All right. Well, first, congratulations to your daughter for the acceptance into Howard. No, as well. It's sorry, but it, well, you know what it's like. It's the first time uh, in a family, and you know what the excitement is like, right? <laughs> right. But here, first of all, but then um, for going there, you know, but it's it's big money and got it. Okay. Well, regrettably, the funds cannot be transferred, cannot from, be transferred. Cannot be transferred from one daughter right. to the other. Oh, I regret that. All right. I regret that. And for the other, um, for the people with the money, do we have to be a part of your bank for uh, any long time to be benefiting from the, the assistance that you offer? Uh, no, you don't have to be a part of the bank for a long time, but you must have an account with us. That's one. 
Um, in order to get that account, you can stop by and we will let you know exactly what you need and how to get funds from us if you need assistance. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. If there be no further questions, let me thank you so very much for spending the better part of your day with us. Oh, somebody has a question? Oh, I'm sorry, miss, I never saw your hand. Yes, I would like to know, um, I heard you talk about the, the courses start from 8 in the morning and up until 9. Um, for persons who are traveling, you know, like if you have a child coming from the country, and um, I want to know if um, in that time would be suitable or you could have other arrangement time. Okay, so what um, Dr. Ricketts was explaining that the period of time during which courses are accessed run from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. Now, persons in selecting their courses will make a determination as to what time they do um, classes. So, um, in, 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 the, in the social sciences, for example, there are different streams. So it's extended like that because sometimes stream one in the day may be full or persons who may be working the course of the day may be able to access an, an afternoon or evening classes, right? So that's a period of time during classes are offered. Usually, uh, someone who is traveling, who is a commuting student who comes to campus just to access classes and go home will pick the time that is best um, for them based on the availability, right? So we encourage persons to come to uh, faculty orientation to benefit from that and to do your course selection or your streams early enough so that you can get the best stream possible that fits your schedule. That's what we would recommend in that regard, right? So that if you're traveling from St. Thomas, for example, or St. Mary, or wherever you're coming from, that you choose a time that best fits your schedule. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon. Um, for clarity, read the commitment fee. My daughter will be doing actuarial science, but she said whenever she go on the site, there is nothing showing where she should pay her fees for the commitment. All right, so to make your, thanks for the question, by the way. To make the payment for a commitment fee, if she goes to the e-commerce platform, just make the payment towards your tuition account. So the tuition account is the main account. Once the payment is there, it, that is okay. So you, won't, you might not see explicitly commitment fee, but once we see the 20,000, we'll know that it's for that. Okay, thank you. In terms of scholarships, what had happened, my son, I've got my scholarship, but what happened is when they sent him the email, he didn't see it, he went into spam. So when he had replied like three weeks after that, so I, know, I don't know what transaction going to take place so to me it's going to be a little late it might end up being a bit late so you're talking about a scholarship from another yes, entity got, yes he got right, a but scholarship. He, he, he saw it late and so would have responded late right so you are now trying to find the resources to pay his fees and you're saying in light of that you may be a little bit late on the fees yeah, so i'm going to ask miss henry to give you the timelines let's repeat the timelines again the dates again and um, for even a payment plan, but certainly once you reach out to us, we'll find a way to work um, with you on that. So, Miss Henry, could you just repeat for her the, the, the timelines around? Sure. 
All right, so if the payment does not come in, the deadline for payment of fees is September 1st for semester one. So if your scholarship is not uh, resolved by that time, then you can try to get him on the installment plan until that is rectified. And the application portal is already open for the installment plan, and it will go up until the 15th of September, where you can get him on the plan itself. All right. All right, the first, so I think it's 3,000, 325,000 something. So we would have to pay like 25% of that? No, man. So remember the 325,000 and change that is quoted, that is the tuition for the academic year. And I remember I mentioned that half is payable in semester one, the other half is due in semester two. So that's 162,000 and change is due in semester one, the remainder in semester two. Oh, that seven. 162 and change, that is, a 25, that is what you should calculate the 25% on. Not oh, the 160 something. For right. So it's 165, 25% of that. 25% well, of that plus the payment of the uh, miscellaneous fee. Mm -hmm. So if you've already paid the commitment fee of the $20,000 and nothing mm -hmm. has been used out of it yet, no, no. then you can just pay the difference. Will he be living on hall? I'm not sure because it depends on the scholarship. Because okay. right now I'm waiting on them because what they did was to cover both tuition and living here and housing and housing all right i'm still waiting on them because of the late response mm -hmm. so i'm still up there all right so regardless of whether is he gonna live on hall or if he's going to travel the miscellaneous fee would still be applicable it just depends on which one right. so i was asking to basically say that the twenty thousand that you paid in the commitment fee you just pay the difference. Mm -hmm. So if it is the 30000 and change, if he's going to travel, you pay the difference of the 10000 and change to complete the payment of the miscellaneous fee. Mm -hmm. All right? And mm -hmm. once you've met all of those and he has registered, try to get him on the installment plan until the scholarship comes through because you don't want him to be restricted by a financial hold where he can't access examination rooms, C grades, and so forth. Right, right, right. All right? All right. Thanks. All the best. Yeah. A round of applause for all our presenters here on stage. And a round of applause for yourselves. You have been a fabulous audience all day. Let me say thank you very much for your time with us today. We really appreciate your presence. We really appreciate your choosing the UWI Mona. We hope that you would have benefited from this sharing of information. Certainly, you can continue to check our websites for information that you may seek. And any information that you want regarding orientation, we can ask you to engage our, our AI um, platform. That's www.ceai.chat. That's www.ceai. Dot C -H -A -T, or you can check the UWI website um, for orientation matters. Um, importantly as well, please check in with our service providers that are there in the tent, check in, get information and access services. Tomorrow marks our orientation for all new undergraduate students. Your child ward or spouse should be here tomorrow starting at 9 o'clock as also on Friday at 9 o'clock. For Western Jamaica campus, orientation activities will be on the 27th and the 29th, continuing through that week, as also our faculty orientation here on this campus in Kingston, Mona, between the 28th to the 1st of um, September. Thank you for being with us today. Do have yourselves a good rest of the day, and be safe on your journey home. Blessings. Thank you. Goodbye.